name is Riley. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for finding me, joining me, and sticking with me if you're new. If you've been around for a minute, you guys rock. You know that. Thank you for the continued support. Today, I'm not even sure what day it is. I've been in between jobs for long enough where that's all become a blur. And I'm enjoying it, but I think I'm ready for some structure again, so I'm excited. I think next week is when I... Uh, Start up full time for the new gig at GX3. We're still putting the building together. This week is moving stuff over, so it's gonna come together real quick. And like I said last week, hopefully I'll be able to weave in and out of there, film some stuff, show you uh, what's good before it, it's up and running. So stay tuned for that. How sick is this shirt, by the way? So that's Deboya Russell I, Russell's Viper, responsible for probably some of the worst and most common snake bite fatalities and injuries over in India and wherever else they're found. Um, is it India? I haven't had coffee. It's somewhere over there. Um, that sounds really ignorant. I'm normally good at this, but I apologize. It's early. Um, but uh, this shirt was um, something that I've had for a while. It's... Uh, from a, an organization called Saving Snakes by Michael Starkey out here and he goes over and does presentations all over the world, educates folks on snake bite, things like that, helps with what is considered the world's largest neglected neotropical disease which is snake bite. Thousands and thousands of people die every year from it so that's where this is from. I forgot I had this shirt for a while, I love wearing it. Plus it's been so freaking hot wearing black shirts all the time, it's getting old. So. Anyway, I'm sitting here because I'm still figuring my life out right now. It's early. Um, but let's get rolling. I want to show you uh, a couple clips of some new snakes that I got. Um, give you a little update on the Papuan python that's growing like a weed. Uh, I took him out the other day. So I've got some new photos and things I can share of him. And then otherwise, uh, I wanted to show you a little hack that uh, turns out a few people know about. Uh, we always talk about ways to save money keeping your snakes. Um, you know, if you have a litter of babies, having a, a bunch of hides for all of them can add up pretty quickly. So I've got a little hack that I wanted to show you there. So um, let's dive right into it. All right, so obviously I'm still sitting here. I'm not changing too much. But the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to put some clips and some shots right here of these new snakes. So um, recently I just acquired a pair of Dumeril's boas from... A family locally here and uh, they produce them you know on and off for a few years and uh, it's been typically small litters and they've given them to friends well this time they had a big litter and they need a little bit of help rehoming them so that's where I come into play uh, I went over there helped sex all those babies or determine the gender and I uh, got to pick out you know a pair for myself um, so I, I acquired those animals and they're absolutely stunning if you don't know who what uh, a Dumeril's boa is, it's a species of boa found in the island of Madagascar. And that's pretty unique in itself because um, boas are typically New World, so North and South America, and pythons are usually Old World, so Africa, Asia, Australo, you know, that whole area over there. And you usually don't see much crossover. However, we do have two species of well, actually three or four species of boas found in Madagascar. That's the thing about those islands. They kind of go off and do their own thing like as far as their uh, evolutionary trajectory of the flora and fauna there it's just isolated and it does its own thing so you have Madagascar ground boas a couple species of Madagascar tree boas and then you have your Dumeril's boas uh, arguably Dumeril's boas are probably the more common of the boas found in Madagascar you'd be hard-pressed to find any ground boas and Sanzini are out there there's plenty of people working with them they just command a high dollar so they're never gonna be super popular recently Dumeril's boas have been uh, popped into that sort of category or some folks are trying to put snakes like this I'll put another photo right here um, as a rare species and then justifying a price hike with that and as much as I do think they should warrant a little bit more than the seventy to one hundred fifty dollars they historically did in the early two thousands, I don't think that uh, these are necessarily a thousand dollars or eight hundred dollar snake. I think there's like this market perfect number where it's a barrier to entry to the people who aren't going to do it right, but just enough of a price mark where 
there are some serious keepers who are going to do well with them because as much as we don't like to talk about money with animals, um, there's a reason why these species aren't popular. And if you're thinking of mass production, stuff for wholesale for the market, if these animals don't command a decent price, these large-scale breeders aren't going to fill their racks with them when they can fill them with scaleless corns or whatever that fetch a higher profit margin for them. So that's why you don't see them quite so commonly. That being said, I do think they're worth about $500. If you get good quality, um, they can even be worth more. But that's neither here nor there. I actually just did a whole podcast with uh, my co-host Andy Ray, who's back, and uh, we talk about that. So be, for, be sure to go check out the uh, Reptile Room podcast. It'll be episode 16 that's coming out next week, I think. Um, so keep an eye out for that. We talk a lot about that and give our opinion, so I'm not going to waste any time on that. But anyway, these boas are insane. Beautiful, docile, big babies. They come out bigger than ball pythons and blood python babies. They're huge, um, just absolute sweethearts, and nothing like your Central and South American boas. So uh, there's a lot of hype around them, and naturally, I think it's deserved. I think they're a beautiful species, so I'm glad to see that there are some folks trying to push that market in a good way for them. Now, as for this guy right here, my Apodora Papuana, dude is, he's a little sneaker. I pull him out every so often and I stretch him out and all of a sudden I realize how much bigger he's gotten. I was always under the impression these guys are super slow growing and I'll I'll be fair, he's not outgrowing anything, but he is growing faster than I expected and he's an absolute gem. Very, very intelligent. A lot going on up here. When I open his door, he's assessing what's going on. And I've tried this whole approach for handling him, like people do with monitors, where you come under and you do all these things to not scare them. And he's thinking of it the same way. He, uh, He's a sweetheart. A lot of gears turning when I come in. No bluff strikes, no headbutting, no huffing and puffing. He just sits there and sort of deciphers what's going on. And then we hang out, and then he doesn't want to go back in because he's a very curious and active animal. So... This guy is doing really, really well. Um, just a, a, a blessing to have a species like this. And recently getting these Dumeril's boas has started getting me thinking about some of these obscure species. There's a big push towards that in the hobby. People trying to look for something different to add some variety to what they keep outside of their, you know, their typical trendy, popular stuff that they, they like or do a lot of. And, uh, and I fully support this push towards uh, bringing back the obscure and unique. So... If you're sitting here watching this and you're getting a little itch for Dumeril's boas or something unique, definitely follow that and go do some research because there's a lot of cool stuff out there that you might not know of. Um, They're not going to be super common, but you can find a lot of these things. So those are just a few updates on a couple beautiful, beautiful snakes. I hope you really enjoy getting to see them. I know plenty of folks uh, always love when I share those guys on Instagram and whatnot, so they're pretty sweet. Now... I don't want to keep this going, I don't want to make this a super long one, but I did want to show you a little bit of a life hack for keeping snakes. And uh, we're going to go into the snake room and I'm going to kind of talk about the background of that. Alright, so hides. Hides are a great thing to have in large bulk quantity. Um, What I will typically do is save all the paper towel tube rolls for baby pythons and colubrids, cut them in half if needed. And these are great because they're snug, a snake can squeeze into them, and if they soil them, you can just toss them. So that's fine and great, but when you're keeping something that needs to be humid, those are going to mold, they're going to get gross, and you're going to go through them too fast, and you don't want to breed bacteria in these enclosures. So I'm always on the hunt for affordable hides. If you go to a commercial retailer, you're going to pay a lot of money for like 20-something of the same hide if they even have it. So I happened to be walking around Target the other day, and... uh, you know how it goes. You don't find what you need in Target. Target tells you what you need. Well, I started walking around and I found these little cups and they come in four packs. And I know the pink is not very ideal, but take what you get. They had gray ones too. But I just cut a little little entryway in here. It's this like flexi rubber plasticky stuff. And four packs are $2. So it's 50 cents a hide. And you can disinfect them, you can wash them, they're not going to grow mold, they're not going to get gross. And you've got a nice waterproof hide that the animal can even get on top of, go in, uh, all of the above. So for somebody like me who 
I'm keeping a lot of babies in as simple and efficient manner as possible, but still trying to give them what they need because that's how it goes. You might not like the ugly reality of breeding, but not everybody gets large bioactive enclosures and all this stuff because I would have to do that 23 times over. That's not happening. So, uh, went to Target, happened to walk around, found those, bought all of them. They make a bunch of different sizes too, that same rubber composite material, and I don't have to worry about it molding. The animals can poop all over it. I can wash it. It's great. So, that being said, go life hack your way into making your keeping a little bit more affordable. Unless you're a baller and can go buy hundreds of those, you know, nice plastic molded injection hides and all that stuff, which would be great. But, um just a little thought so um and since we're sitting here let's look at some rainbows right might as well not tease you although i guess i could say this is teasing you because these ones are going to be going to a certain somebody so these snakes are already spoken for i believe this is the male this little dude just shed Smoke show. Yeah. Bold backgrounds. See how a lot of that's bleeding together? That's from uh, the Picasso Stripe influence from Dad. He's from Picasso Stripe line of animals from Dave Collings stock. So, really, yeah, some like right there, those dorsal spots chaining together. This is a beautiful animal. This boy would be a holdback if I was looking for him, but I've got too many anyway. So, really, really nice Brazilian rainbow boa. So, these things are doing well. They're all on their second sheds, eating, growing, pooping. They're not biting as much anymore, but there's still a few that love to tell me that they're they're bad boys. So, uh, but look at that. So. Rainbows are doing well. A lot of people have been hitting me up. I'm going to be straight up. I'm not going to be able to get to all of you. My waiting list doubles the amount of babies that are even available. And, uh, I mean, there's always the chance people back off waiting lists. It happens. But um, a lot of folks have been asking me, hey, did I make the cut? Did I make the cut? And it's a tough answer because I don't know. I just don't know yet. They haven't started going out yet. It's too hot to ship. It's snowing ash out here in California, by the way. I'm sure all of you have seen the fires that are raging everywhere. It's absolutely nuts. It's finally cool enough to have some cross breeze, and the air quality sucks. So you get cool air, and it sounds like you're sucking the back end of a cigarette all day. So take what you get, I guess. California's on fire. Fortunately, it's nowhere near me, but we're feeling the effects anyway. So, um, yeah. Otherwise, I'd take these out and show you some snakes in beautiful natural light. But the photos you did see earlier of the Doomerals, those were outside natural light. I braved the, the grossness for that, just for y'all. But, um, yeah. So, hopefully in the next week or so, we'll be getting to the shop, doing some filming. Um, you know, maybe next week's vlog will be from the shop. Um, although I think it'll be on my weekend. Well, we'll figure it out. Anyway, um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed those updates on those two really unique species of snake. If you've never heard of them, go research them, go learn. Learning is tons of fun. And while I have you here, don't forget to go become a member of USARC. Sign up for that. It's five bucks a month. There's plenty more you can give. It makes a huge difference. Please go do it. If you are a reptile keeper in any capacity and you are watching this and you are not a member of USARC, why? Go do it. It's really easy. It takes 10 minutes to sign up at most. Um, that's probably with a bathroom break in there and you just sign up and you can just donate five bucks a month It's really easy or more. I suggest whatever you can do because everyone can do it um, And then on top of that Let's see us arc uh, Keep an eye out for the reptile room podcast. We just dropped uh, the episode with my good buddy Jacob Bratz That was a ton of fun and Andy Ray is back. We just recorded with him So the following episode will be with him Still working on a couple really good shows for that uh, podcast. And then in the meantime, getting the NPR network kicked off with a, a bunch of new content. So, you know me, I love Morelia, and Morelia Python uh, Radio is essentially my home podcast, even though I'm on the other side of the country. And uh, those guys are awesome. Eric and Owen are like brothers to me at this point. I love talking to them. And uh, so Owen and I have started a new podcast called Call You Bread Corner that'll be coming out probably next week. So keep an eye on that. That'll be under the NPR network as well. And you can find all of those on 
all your major podcast uh, apps and, and platforms. So without further ado, I'm going to go get clean in some water bowls. It's early. I need to do a bunch of cleaning in here. And uh, I will catch you all next week. Don't forget, U.S. Ark. Enjoy those obscure species. Life hack your way into saving some money with uh, keeping your snakes. And stay safe out there, everyone. Peace.